Namaste yogis, my name is Justin Wolfer with Rise Yoga and Movement Art Center. I'm filming a quick tutorial on headstand, Shirshasana. Um, headstand, uh, considered in classical yoga to be the king of all postures. Yogis revered um, inverting the body against gravity, breathing in this position. Um, but it's very, very important that you create a strong, steady position um, so that your nervous system can relax, so the breath can be very steady, so that the body can release and naturally sort of reverse um, all of the systems that are governed by gravity. Um, another sort of important point to consider is that uh, headstand has gotten a lot of press lately um, for injuring students. Um, and uh, what I see a lot is students are entering this posture um, very recklessly, they're entering it without technique. Um, that's not yoga. That's not practicing yoga. Um, it's very important that, especially with a, a, a pose in which uh, is completely unfamiliar to your body. So, for example, when you start yoga, we're very used to standing on our legs. It's, it's, it's not something that's completely new. Um, but standing on your head is something that will certainly be new to you. It was very new to me, and, and the first time that I saw it, I was like, where am I? This, is, uh, this isn't really... Um, incredible thing to see. Um, so anyways, you have to build um, body awareness. You have to build awareness of yourself in space. You have to build awareness of what muscles to engage and how to engage them upside down. Um, so all of that takes time. And what I like to tell students is, is that an inversion is sort of like building a uh, skyscraper, so to speak. Um, so, uh, obviously when you're building a tall building, um, if you're building it over a foundation that isn't strong and stable, um, the higher you go with that, found, uh, with that building, um, the less and less stable it's going to be, the more and more likely that something's going to become a problem. Um, the other part of that is, is that you want your, um, not only in headstand, but in, in your entire yoga practice. Um, think of it as, you know, sort of you are the architect of your yoga practice, that, um, that you don't want to rush, um, you don't want to rush the process, you don't want to use crappy materials, um, you want to build something that's long-lasting, that's going to bear fruit for you for the rest of your life. So if we rush through the process, you know, if we don't pay attention um, to what we're creating, um, you'll end up sort of having to either go back and redo it, relearn it, um, or you'll have to sort of, uh, hopefully this doesn't happen, but you may end up injuring yourself um, or sort of telling yourself, oh, this will never happen. Look, I can never do a headstand. Um, the truth is, is that everyone at our studio can do a headstand within a month. Um, uh, and the reason for that is, is that we really sort of uh, make sure that we take... Um, we take uh, intelligent steps towards doing it, steps that everyone can do. Um, and so there's two basic rules that we have at Rise Yoga when you're um, practicing Shirshasana. The first is that, and I'll get into these in specific in just a moment, the first is, is that coming into a headstand prep position where we're in downward facing dog, and I'm talking about headstand where our forearms are on the ground and our hands are wrapping around the head, um, that you must be able to lift your head off the ground. Um, so you have to be able to push from your back. You have to know how to do that so that you can push from your back and lift your head off the ground. So that's the first um, requirement. Um, if you can't lift your head off the ground, you don't have the strength yet to, to do a headstand. So that's something that, that I'll show you and we'll work on. Um, the second thing is no jumping into headstand. I want to see you be able to press into your headstand. So for two reasons. First, again, this is going to come back to your foundation and the technique with your foundation. If, if your foundation is steady, then we're going to easily start to be able to lift and put more and more weight into that foundation. The second um, purpose is for control. So if you're jumping up into your headstand, uh, most likely you're not going to be able to control that movement very well. Um, it's going to be fast, you're going to be sort of um, readjusting as you do it to, to hopefully maintain stability. 
Uh, I would rather you be able to do it really slow, which is going to condition and strengthen the muscles that you need to hold headstand um, throughout the movement from your feet on the ground all the way up to above your balance point. Um, and also, this is going to start to cultivate body awareness. You're going to start to understand by following these steps exactly where your body is, exactly what muscles you need to engage. So it's really an informative practice, and that's what this is all about. Let's become smarter as we're practicing, increasing sort of our relationship to the physical body. Okay, so the first thing, how do I create a really strong and stable shoulder girdle? Um, so the first common mistake that I see um, in headstand is that the elbows are sliding out away from your midline. So anytime we're moving out away from our balance point, it's less steady, it's less stable. Um, so that's gonna put a lot more weight on your neck and that's not something that we wanna do. So we want almost all of the weight to be um, uh, from the center of the back, pushing into the ground. So we want the head to almost be weightless. Um, it's just sort of there in place. Um, so that's the first thing. Elbows are sliding out away from the midline. This also, what it will do is um, close the back of your body, which is what we want to keep open. Um, so it's a much less stable, much less optimal position for the body. So what I teach is, is that your elbows are just slightly wider than your armpits. And the reason that they're slightly wider from, than the armpits is I emphasize squeezing into your midline. Now you don't want your elbows to be um, uh, squeezing in further into the midline than your armpits. It's just more of an isometric strength that we're wrapping into the body. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I see that's a common mistake is, is that the shoulders collapse forward and in, the chin and neck collapse forward and in. Um, so that's going to, if you can imagine sort of building a, something on quicksand, that's going to collapse all the space in the pose. Um, and uh, obviously over time that's going to become less and less comfortable, um, less and less optimal for your body. So your body enjoys space. Um, so what our job is is to create um, the structure within the pose, the stability within the pose that's going to l allow us to keep good space. Okay, so the third thing is, is the, the spine is opening into a back bend. So that either comes in the thoracic spine where the ribs open, and again, the back body is collapsing, um, or it comes in the hips, where the hips are arching into a back bend. Okay, so I'll give you some tips and pointers on how to um, how to help with all of these problems. So the first um, the first thing is the hands come around the head, interlacing your fingers. You're bringing the elbows slightly wider than shoulder distance apart. We're squeezing the elbows towards each other like there's an exercise ball between the arms. And then think about bringing your armpits forward in front of your chest and wrapping the outer armpits around the chest. Now, again, to counter this movement where we're losing space, push your head against your hand. And that's going to keep your neck long. And it's also going to engage the neck muscles so that they can support weight and support um, the cervical spine. And then pulling the ribs down, lifting the backside ribs away from your hips, okay? So that's the basic technique that we want to um, apply to the shoulder girdle to keep the shoulder girdle strong and spacious. Okay, so the first exercise that I require students to be able to do, to do headstand, you're gonna come into tabletop position and then bring your elbows down, slightly wider than the shoulders, interlacing your fingers, bring the hands up around the head. We're coming up into a headstand prep position, can keep a soft bend in the knees. So again here, wrapping the inner arms, wrapping the elbows, the armpits around the chest, pushing the head against the hands. What we're going to do is engage the backside ribs, pull the chest in, push into the ground, lift the head off the ground. 
So try four or five of these, pushing into the ground, using the center of the back, squeezing the inner arms, keeping the structure of the body, and then rest for a second. So if you can't do that yet, what I want you to do is stay in that prep position with your legs on the ground, with the head on the ground. You're pushing from the center of the back and breathing. And that's your exercise. So you're holding all of those techniques and stability means that nothing's moving. So we're engaging the muscles so that the body stays relatively still. So the more movement in inversions, uh, the less likely balance is gonna be, the less fun it's gonna be for you and your nervous system is going to be um, very hesitant to, um, to sort of um, calm down. All right, so stability, stability, stability. So the next exercise is once that stability is there, once I can lift the head, now it's time to start um, connecting the legs and the, the core of the body to the strong stability in your shoulder girdle. So again, coming into this prep position, interlacing the hands, head comes against the hands, pushing into the forearms, wrapping the inner arms around the chest. So from here, I'm going to bring one knee into the body. Leg does not come up, it comes in. So squeeze in. Chest comes in, wrapping around the chest, pushing into the forearms and relax. Other leg, squeeze in, push down, wrapping the armpits around the chest, pushing from the forearm and down. If that happens and you start to lift your feet off the ground, come into a tuck position. Start to lengthen your hips away from the balance point. Keep pushing in to the forearms from the back, wrapping around the neck, head comes against the hands. After that, one leg comes up, keeping the other leg tucked. Keep pushing, find your forearms, and then back in, tuck. Other leg comes back, push, tuck. And then finally, both legs, big toes together, squeeze the butt down, Lifting your hips, drawing the backside ribs into the ground, and then tuck. Try to lower down really slow. From here, we'll take child's pose for about five to ten breaths. Oh, all right. So follow the steps. Build a really high quality posture and that posture will continue to bear fruit for you as you practice. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.